seems legit. Hello, my legitimates. Welcome back to my channel. Yes, I have changed my hair for like the millionth time. I'm going to keep doing it. It's going to be a thing. Uh, we've gone with iced chocolate. Anyway, today I am making the Beanie Baguette bag by Spencer and Og. It's really cute. It's pretty fun. You can see by the length of the video. And I wasn't even sewing full speed today. So it's got this very cute zipper. It just needs to sit. I did just steam it and then I touched it before it set. But it does sit nicely. You just got to give it a minute. And then when we go inside, we've also got a zipper pocket on the inside as well. Um, and apart from that, it's just it's just a nice, simple, quick little bag. So if you would like to see how to make this, please stay tuned. Right, let's get started. You are going to need your, um, what's it called? A lower back lining piece and one of your lower back linings. These are my paper cutting scissors. So I'm just gonna cut on the dotted line, like so. Cut it out, is what we're doing. And then I'm just gonna line it up against the piece and we're gonna draw the rectangle. So we're gonna go up and along and then we're gonna flip this, line it up, up, and along like so. Pop that. Oh, where's my thing? You know what? Pop it in the top. Okay, so we need that. And then we also need our, we're gonna need our zip as well, but and our zipper pocket. So this is my zipper pocket here. So what I wanna do is I wanna line it up in the center, like so. And then on a two and a half stitch length, I'm going to stitch those two pieces together. So we're gonna stitch, back stitch to lock all your stitches in. And then when we get to that corner, we're gonna have our needle down in the corner, pivot all the fabric. So along our line, needle down in the corner, pivot. Then we're gonna go up to the edge and back stitch again to lock in those stitches. Trim off your tails, both of them, preferably. And then even though these are paper cutting, they should still work. So I'm just gonna cut diagonally into both of these corners, like that. So you wanna get pretty close, but not so close that you actually clip your stitches. Then I'm going to finger press this up so it's flat and then fold it over and then bring out those side pieces like this and like this. Now you might want to iron this. Um, ironing it would be better. So I'm just going to finger press it. I am going to iron it, but we're just going to finger press it first because uh, it looks neater. If you've just used waterproof canvas, finger pressing is fine. But because mine's fabric, I do want to iron this to make sure it's going to sit nicely. That is now ironed nice and flat, so it's sitting the way I want. I'm now going to take a piece of zipper tape, which is the length of the pocket piece. And my zipper. I'm going to crack the zipper just a little bit. And then I'm going to point it downwards. Put it on half the zipper and then I'm going to feed the other half in and then when you look down the barrel of it they should line up together get them lined up together and then push the zipper from the top and that should get your zipper pull on so with that I'm now going to lay the zipper down pop it over the top like so and then I'm going to top stitch around the whole zipper. Now, if you're using a metal zipper, do not try and stitch over those teeth. It never works out the way you'd hope, I promise. Along we go. You also might want to think about which way you want your zipper to um, close. I always have mine closing to the left, but if you like yours closing to the right, uh, make it go the other way. I'm gonna trim off that tail. It's caught in the back stitches. And I've got a bit of a bird's nest going here. So I'm gonna untrim that as well. That's better. If I could cut that off. 
All right, so now we're going to fold this up to the top and I'm going to grab some Wonder Clips. My um, zip has been sitting with an elastic band, so it is a little bit kind of wonky looking. You can iron the edges of your zipper if you need to. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to grab our little top piece, which is this one here. And I'm going to put that right sides down and then add it into the clips. We all know how I feel about trying to clip lots of things at once. Do it in sections, that's always easier. Put an extra one on here. And then we're going to stitch and back stitch. Now the other thing I wanna do, I'm gonna stop here with my needle down and then I'm just gonna zip this past so it doesn't annoy me. Trim off those tails, put the clips back in the bowl. Now I would like to stitch this up because I think it's going to look nice and it's going to help it sit flatter. Uh, you could do this in a different decorative stitch length if you wanted to. Okay. Now the pattern says to stitch down each side. Um, so I can do this from the back here. So we're going to stitch all the way down. Stitch and back stitch. And then all the way down. You can also, if you want to, just stitch the pocket if you don't want the lines on the outside. Um, but it is kind of cool looking, so I'm happy to do them. Let's do the other side. Start the same spot. Stitch, back stitch, and down we go. And back stitch at the other end just to lock in those stitches. And trim off those tails. And voila! So now all we should have the four pieces and your strap piece. So let's take our zipper. And my scissors, which I have put in the tub. Trim it off. Uh, how big is that? That is still big enough, so I am going to keep that. I have a plan for that one. So, we're going to take our zip, and we're going to crack it just a little bit, and then we're going to pull the side down to make a right angle like this. And we're going to lift up our needle so we can actually get under there. And then I just want to stitch that down. And back stitch, and stitch, and back stitch. Whoops. And then I'm also just going to singe the edge here. Uh, because the zipper was trying to fray and we don't want that. And then I'm going to do the same to the other side. So we just pull it down. I put my finger here to kind of create the angle. Like so. You also want to make sure that they're even. And then we can stitch this one. Now I'm stitching close to the edge of the zipper tape. Because uh, I don't want to see these stitches later. Um, so I just go forward and backwards a couple of times. You don't need a lot of stitches. Uh, you can also hand stitch it if that's your jam. Now I've got our zipper like this. So let's grab the lining piece. Now I'm actually going to start with the one with the zipper so that my zipper is going to close the same direction. I'm going to separate these. I'm going to measure. And I'm going to clip the zip along the curve. Right sides up. Now because it is a curve, I'm going to use a lot of clips so it doesn't shift like so. There's nothing wrong with using a lot of clips. Now when we get to the end, I'm going to tuck this 
down at a right angle and then clip it in place. So I can show you that up close. So I'm taking this and I'm turning it in and down to create a right angle and an end. And then clip that down. Now you can just, um, the pattern does say to tack it in place, but I'm actually just gonna grab my exterior and add it in. But if you don't wanna do that, that is okay. I just figure, why not? Um, but if you're going to do the stitching first, you wanna do it really close to the edge so we don't see it later. Oops, I nearly just lost my thread then. So I'm gonna start here. We're gonna stitch, we're gonna back stitch. And then off we go. So I'm gonna go nice and slowly, because it's a curve, you don't wanna stitch over your zipper tape. It is deceptively easy to do. And then when we get to the end, we're gonna back stitch. And trim off those tails. And voila. Now, if you want to, and I'm going to, because I do want to, I'm going to tuck the seam allowance down and I'm just gonna top stitch where the zipper lies. Stitch, back stitch. So I'm doing it an eighth of an inch from the edge so that I catch that underneath bit and it's gonna help it sit nicer. So I'm just bending it down. We're not going all the way to the edge though. We're just gonna stop where the zipper tape stops and back stitch. Trim it off. Zip it in. I know it looks a bit wonky, but that's because it's not connected yet. Don't worry too much about that. Now let's repeat that whole process with the other half. Ah, once we trim off our tails, of course. Nobody likes tails. So, zip our right sides up. I'm gonna start from the other end this time because I always like to start from that forward edge. It's the easiest way. So again, we're going to clip it down around the curve, lots of clips to hold it in place. You can also use double-sided tape if you've got some really skinny stuff. Um, and then when we get to the end, again, we're gonna tuck it inwards and down to create a right angle, which is the end of the zipper, like so, and then clip it in place. Again, if you want to, you can base that down before we add our other piece. I'm just gonna add all three at once, because I can, and because I want to. Right, so now we're gonna make sure I've got a big enough tail so that that doesn't happen again. We're gonna stitch, back stitch, and then slowly round the curve. We're not in a hurry. You wanna get a nice, even looking curve, and then back stitch. And then, I'm just gonna move my clips again. They're moving all over the shop today. Tails behind, tuck this seam allowance under the vinyl or the exterior if you haven't done vinyl. And then I'm gonna stitch and back stitch. And then go slowly around. Making sure that you're holding this as the curve is. And don't try and hold it as like a big straight thing because it's not. And backstitch. And trim off all your tails. 
If we do them as we go, we'll have less mess later. Okay. So now I'm going to take the tail of the zipper, bring it back and clip it over here out of my way. I'm going to use two clips so it doesn't misbehave. I'm going to do the same to this. It just needs to be back out of the way because we're going to stick these side bits next. Well, not next, next, but soon. Right. Open it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clip the sides. So I'm lining up the bottom edge, I'm lining up this top edge. Like this. I'm going to do the same with the lining. Like that. jump in between there. Take off the tails. And then I'm just going to stitch this little bit in here. So we're going to go over, back stitch, of course. You want to line up all of the raw edges. We're going to go to here, needle down, pivot, over, needle down, pivot, and to the end. That is now my beautiful edge done. And it's looking awesome. Before we go further, we need to now attach our handle. Um, I have not yet made my handle. I've decided I'm going with something fun and glorious. Uh, but you can... Do whatever you like. Move that down there. So I'm going to do half this and half this. Uh, but instead of doing the fold over like I normally do, we're actually just going to stick it so it's literally half and half because I thought that would be something different to do. Um, the pattern also says you can use webbing, so you can do that if you like. And we're going to put I've cut one longer. Obviously, I was just doing like the edge. We need some double-sided tape, or you can use clips if you don't have or like using double-sided tape. So I'm using half inch, and I'm going to put it nice and close to the edge. I will be stitching through this, uh, but I want it to hold everything where I want. So one piece in the middle is not going to do it for me today. We're going to use two bits on each side. it off, come back to the start and go again. So we're getting fairly close to that edge but not so close that the sticky tape is going to stick out. I'm leaving like an eighth of an inch maybe. I'm not measuring it, I'm just close but not right on the edge. So you can do that however you like. So now I've got this, I've got two bits. You could instead use clips if you'd prefer that. I'm also going to just rub this a little bit. Heating up the glue and putting pressure will allow it to stick better. And you should be able to pick the backing off better. On the other hand, there we go. Better. So I'm just going to pull off a small section. And then grab the outer part that I want to use. And we're going to line it up nice and neatly. So I cut these with a rotary cutter, so they should be 
identical and even if they're not I'm concentrating on one edge and then I'm just going to pull these back a little bit more lining, I'm lining up the closest edge to me because that's the easiest way and then I'm going to put that rubbish in the bin You want to make sure you're not pulling on this either or it will make it kind of warped and not sit flat. Okay. Had a little bit extra there. That's fine. So this edge, it's all pretty straight to be honest. All right, I am going to go up to a decorative stitch length for this. So I'm going to go all the way up to four and I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch from the end. We are not in a hurry. You can also edge coat this if you'd like. Right, so that's the edge that I lined up. Now I just like to show you. See here? That's not even. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to a cutting table. And now that they're stuck together and they're sewn, I'm going to make this exactly that thick from the thinnest point here. So I'm going to rotary cut it all so it's beautiful and straight. Um, and then we can go back to attaching it. Okay, so this is now beautifully even. And this is what I ended up cutting off. So it's just a tiny little bit, but it does make all the difference. Because I don't want a wonky strap. I could have just cut out that bit, but then the strap wouldn't be even. We don't want that. So, stitch. I don't have to back stitch. This is all going to go into the seams. Nice and slow. Now, if you're going to edge coat, I suggest doing it right now. Uh, you don't have to do these ends here, but you will have to do all the sides. So if you're going to edge coat it, go and do that now. Uh, I'm not going to because my edges don't look all that bad, really. looks lovely. So now we're going to bring, grab our main bit, pull the lining away. And then on this seam here, you may actually wish to open it out and then rub it with something so it stays open. Um, and this will just help eliminate thickness issues that we're about to have. Because we're gonna lay that down flat and then we're gonna take our strap and lay it over that seam uh, there's not really much room for clips. If you want to, you could um, double-sided tape the back. So let's do that. And I'm just going to put the little bit here for where we're stitching. Once we flip it over, we're going to measure out how high we're stitching it. And I'm just going to use an erasable pen to mark where we stop stitching like this. See how it's very faint? We're going to stitch that line. So, pull the tape off the back. Again, make sure that this is spread open and flat like that. And then from the base, we're just going to stick it directly over the seam. It's actually pretty high to stitch, just so you are aware. So again, we're not actually going to stitch this. It's just easier to be able to sew it in a minute. So I'm going to start here and we're just going to go back through the lines we had earlier. Making sure that your lining is out of the way and that I don't knock things off the table. Now 
needle down, pivot, go across, needle down, pivot, and back down we go. Trim those tails. And so now, you've still got a bit of a gap up the top here, which is fine. It's exactly what we want, but your handle is now attached. So, let's do all of that on the other side. Now, the second side's obviously going to be more tricky. So, I'm going to line that up, clip. this half then we're gonna we can actually not do the lining yet we actually just need to clip this part and stitch here that way the lining is less likely to be in our way when we're trying to put the other handle on I like that idea okay so with the handle we're gonna make it so it's all fed in without any kind of twists. So I'm going to grab it from where it's attached, pull it, and then just feed it in because it's going to go on the other side like that. But we also need to measure our line like that. So again, we're going to draw it on just with something erasable. Don't use an actual pen not advised and then double-sided tape it really will be your friend at this point you want to make sure it's just below where we're gonna stitch and I am just putting it down the center you can put two bits if that makes it more secure and makes you happy so again making sure there's no twists I'm just gonna feed it in lining it up on this edge right in the middle and then I'm just going to lay it down over the seam in the middle. Okay, so that is stuck in there. It's going to be tricky to see, but it'll be fine. So I'm just going to stitch and back stitch. Up one side we go. Just keep pulling all the rest of it away. I definitely agree to my let's not do the lining yet because it's keeping it out of the way. Oh, and I've just knocked that. To the other side, needle down, pivot. Try not to knock this. And backstage. Excellent. Hopefully you don't have a twisted handle. That is done there. So now we can go and stitch the other half of our lining. I'm just going to line it up without clips. Don't feel that you have to do it because I did. If you prefer to do clips on everything, that is totally okay. Okay, so now we're going to do this little corner. Backstitch. Needle down, pivot and across. Needle down, pivot and to the end. Yay! Excellent. So, now we're going to stitch the exterior part. We're going to ignore the lining. I am going to use clips because it is fighting me a little bit and is not sitting flat. 
That will be the handles at the side, by the way. I didn't put any interfacing on this either because it is plenty thick enough, this vinyl. So we're going to stitch and backstitch. And then stitch along the bottom and backstitch again. Then we're going to box the corner. So we're just going to pull this out. And you're going to, even though there's a strap in the way, we want to get the center line of this in line with the center of the other side. Clip it. Like so. And then we're going to stitch across all of that. So I'm going to stitch and backstitch like we always do. Backstitching is very important. Or you can tie it off. Or you can do what a pulse do. I'll show you what a pulse do on the other end. So what a pulse string. Oh, okay. So before we get to that, this needs to be bent the same way so that it sits flat inside the bag. Very important. I only need two clips. So upholsterers, instead of back stitching, they're going to do one. They make three holes, which is two complete stitches. Then they lift it up, go back to the first hole, and then go in again. So that's the same as a back stitch. It's just a little bit neater. Um, but back stitching is easier because you've got the thing right there. Okay, so that's the outside done. It's all beautiful, but we're just going to ignore that for a minute. Let's move to our lining. Now we're going to turn the bag through the bottom, but we do still have to box the corners. So I'm just going to put two clips on each end. Now the bigger the hole you leave, the easier it is to turn through, but also the more you have to stitch shut. So it's a bit of a six in one, half a dozen in the other. So we're going to stitch, back stitch, and then I'm just going to get up to that second clip and then stop and back stitch. Make sure you 100% back stitch that. Um, or when you turn it through, it's all just going to come undone. Then I'm going to flip her over. Do the same at this end. Yep. I think I just ran out of bobbin. Or something. No? Something wasn't working. Right. Stitch and a decent back stitch. Then we're going to box these corners. So we just pull this out. Make sure that both of those in the center line up. I always like to put at least one clip in the center. And then we're just going to stitch with the same seam allowance we're using for everywhere, which is three eighths. I can tell you seam allowance. I just don't tell you measurements. Right, and then this end. So even though this is currently not attached, it's still relevant. So we still need to make that go that way so that when we do finally stitch it down it will sit flat and then I always like to have the other one going the opposite way because it makes for a flatter seam clip clip under we go stitch back stitch over we go and because my lining is blue I'm gonna have to stitch to blue thread or we'll switch so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a corner and push it in to create a poppet you should be able to grab onto it like a poppet then I kind of do this to my hand make like a giant C and push it the bag over the bit that I've grabbed now the bigger the hole the easier this is pull the bag out I'm just gonna then put my hand in Push out those corners. You want them to be nice and crisp and out. And then we're going to do the same to this. You can also use your turning stick. Push that out. Um, you can also add a piece of stabilizer ironed into the base of this right now if you wanted to. But I need to change thread color first. Right, I have now switched to a navy thread. So now what I need to do is tuck in these raw edges. Now there's a few ways you can do it. I like to just poke my fingers in and pull taut. And then it all kind of lines up. If you want to, you can then iron that so that it's perfectly lined up. 
or we can add some clips if that's what you prefer. I'm just clipping it right on the edge to make sure they stay lined up. And then we're just going to top stitch. Now, the other option that you do have, if you wish, is to hand stitch this. You can't see it. Um, I personally don't know anyone that does that. But you definitely can do that if you don't want to see these stitches. Get to the end and back stitch. And then trim off your tails. Push your lining in. Like that. I'm also using my fingers and poking out the corner so it sits lovely and flat in there. Then we can unclip this. Oops, wrong one. And then I just need to put the zip on. So I'm going to pull this to make sure there's no kinks anywhere in the zip on. And then I'm going to put one half on and only like pull it back until it's about halfway. I like to pinch it to get it closer to that edge. Oh, I've broken a tooth right there. It's sticking out. Chop the tooth off because it's in the way. And I personally like to always put the left one in first. I find it easier for me, personally. Then we're going to pull it on. Now I reckon this is wrong, but we want to double check with this end. It actually worked out fine. Uh, the other thing I have to do is push this little bit here out. It was tucked away. We don't want that. Alright. I'm going to steam that to help it sit nicely. Um, but zips tend to not like being in that curve anyway. But I've pulled it up and it is even. So if it wasn't even, you'd have like a bulge on one side compared to the other. We obviously don't want that. So if that happens to you... Just pull it off again and then add some teeth to the, the side that's wrong. And then I'm going to just add a zipper end. If you don't have zipper ends or you don't like them or you're trying to keep costs super down, you can just stitch a piece of vinyl onto the end. That will also work. So I'm going to just singe this with a lighter because it was a bit fluffy. Now, I'm going to fold this side over. And this side over so it's a bit of a triangle then we just push and shove the zipper end on and shove it till it's all the way in and you can't push it anymore take your little tiny screw now I've magnetized my screwdriver head by just running it over my snippety snip magnet I don't know you can't really see what I'm doing so over here I've got my snippety snip and I just do this and run it over it and it makes it magnetized which means it'll hold the screw for you and trust me that comes in handy then in we go I think my batteries are dying this is one of my favorite gadgets that my child likes to play with loves my mini screwdriver the battery tends to not last all right and then you should be able to pull on that and it doesn't come off not that you're gonna pull on it hard often but always just give it a tug to make sure And then I will just steam the this so it sits a bit nicer and then we're all good to go. And that is your little beanie baguette. You could also make this shorter if you wanted to. Um, I kind of like it longer though. And then it's just a cute little carry bag. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Oh, see this here? We're going to singe that off. I've got like a little fluffy thread. I don't know if you can tell, uh, but I can see it. So it's got to go. Lighters are a good way if you don't have a thread zapper. Thread zappers are good, lighters are almost as good. Not quite, but almost. So there you go, guys. I do need to steam that, it's annoying me. Anyway, um, I hope you learned something today. This is just a fun, cute, quick little bag. I don't think the video took that long. Um, and I wasn't even sewing at full speed today. I thought I'd slow down a little bit. Again, if you change your mind, you can still edge coat this now. It'll just be harder as you get down to here, trying not to get it on your bag. But it can be done if you wanted to change mind. Alright guys, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!